When we're talking about bench press, literally just like the technique of bench press, people start thinking about that when they start to lower the bar, when they start to press the bar up. Right. But the majority of the faults happen in your setup, in laying down, in getting tight. And benching, the way we, the reason people can lift such ridiculous weights is because we've got this, this bench that we can kind of use to our advantage and wedge ourselves under it and create so much tension through our body to the point where it's ridiculously uncomfortable and use that, that tension to, to help us lift more. So our goal is to like kind of shut down all other movements so that we've just got this, this short stroke that's really stable and we're, we're not gonna be losing power anywhere else. So I like to set my feet first. I, did you set your feet first? Don't remember. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. We should remember and be doing the same thing every yeah. time. But I set my feet first purely because, uh, and it's not a must, you can kind of do it in any way, whether you set your arms first, like your grip first, or your feet first, but the end result has to be the same. And I like to set my feet first purely because it means that I'm going to be like even, I can see it, and I can start in the exact same spot every time. So if I was benching here every week, I might like line my feet up with like this line. Right. And just do it the same every time, same width. From there, because if I try to lie back straight now, I'm just gonna smash into this bar, mm. which is not fun. So I'm gonna slide forward over the top. I pull the my feet back a bit far then. And now I can lay back and not come up. I go behind it a little bit. Right, yeah, you're way back. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I do it. This is just a, a comfortable spot. This is where I'm starting. And uh, from here, I'm going to put my fingers where I'm gonna bench. Okay. So like you see people kind of go to this or whatever, and then they'll put their hands up or they'll start in a little bit close, come underneath, and then adjust. But the problem with that is, like the, during that adjustment, you, you're losing tension. Like you're, you're losing some of that, that set up tightness that we just created. So if we can set our feet and use uh, the tension from that end and set our hands and use the tension from our upper body and kind of jam ourselves in a little ball of energy and then keep that throughout the lift, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't sound too complex, but it's, it's hard to coordinate. Yeah. So I'm gonna set my hands where I bet and where I'm gonna bet today. Now from here, I'm gonna slide forward during that slide, I'm gonna be creating a little bit of tension in the ground already. So I'm trying to like leg extension or kick or put my toes through the front of my shoes, however you wanna think about it. But I'm already creating tension this way, almost like against myself. Right. Yes, yeah, so your, your legs are pushing your body that way. Yeah, I'm trying to get this way. Push that way. Yeah. So here, and then I'm gonna come in front of it a little bit. So like I'm not gonna bench from here because I'll have to unrack it this far. But from here, I'm going to, again, use my legs to wedge myself up the bench. So I'm gonna kind of like slide up until my nose is underneath it. And now, it's hard to see, really hard to see, but I'm also gonna be like kind of half pressing this barbell into the rack, so I'm creating tension that way with my arms. You're pulling down. So I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. Oh, so push so your body that way. Yeah, my arms are pushing this way, my legs are pushing that way, and the right. end result is gonna be me jamming myself into a, yeah. just a freaking ball of uncomfortableness. All the pressure is like here, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, and that's what's gonna create this stupid arch. Right. So here, with a little bit of pressure, obviously like I'm gonna have to slide a little bit, so mm. it, it, I'm not, I'm letting myself lose, I guess. And then pressing up, and then from that, it's going to create a lot of tension. It'll be easier when there's weight on the bar. And that's going to create this arch. And then from here, that's when I'm going to pull this bar out and start my set. That looks so painful. Oh, that looks so painful. It is a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, very. Let's go there. Now, they're not going to move at all from here on. Okay. They're stuck. Yeah. They're in the mud. Your heels are off the ground. Mine are, but... So, is that a good or is that illegal? Legal? Is it good Depends bad? what federation you're in. Uh, but I don't think there's an inherent benefit or negative to it. Oh, Some okay. of the best benches in the world, they're out here. Right, okay. And they're kind of like, they're yeah. pushing. But it's all about your leg drive. Okay. And your legs aren't lifting the weight, so yeah. it's about tension. So whatever position your legs are in to get you tension, mm. who cares? So it's just about a little bit of trial and error behind that. I didn't get as big an arch as you. Does that mean I should bring my feet back more? Not or? everybody's gonna have a big arch. I, right. 
I spent lots of years training to get a big arch, mm-hmm. almost in a negative way, because like when I first started benching, I was like, what are all the best guys doing? And then I looked at the videos and I went, he's got a big arch, that must right. be the secret. It's definitely not his gigantic pecs and arms. Right. So like, I, for some reason I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on the arch. And yeah. I really focused on that and it led me to getting a better arch. Unfortunately, the bench didn't come with it. Right. But um, I don't think you should focus on getting a bigger arch. I think you should focus on tension and that arch is a byproduct of yeah, tension. Okay. We need to teach ourselves to think before it, get in a good position and build habits. Yeah, okay. To set those feet, feet, make sure your head doesn't hit the bar. You need to grab the bar with the grip that you are gonna press with, that's there. Cool. Once your hands are on the bar and in position, that's it. You don't need to do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Where should my elbows go when I press? Don't think about your elbows. <laughs> like I said, there's not much thinking about when you're doing the press because right. when it gets heavy, you're not going to be able to think much anyway. Right. Over tucking, over over flaring are both bad. Okay. Usually, your yeah, elbows are the guy in the middle. So if you get the shoulders right and you get the hands right, they do good things. Same right. with your knees on the squat. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> focus on the setup. Let's get right. that right, and we won't need to focus about the actual press. And then we need to learn to hold it through the unrack, which since you'll learn to create a lot of tension, you should be able to get it pretty easy. But basically, it's easier said than done, but like we just don't want to lose it. So what you'll see a lot of people is they'll get under it, kind of get really tight, and then as they're at the unrack, kind of go like, ugh. Right. And just yeah. lift it out, the chest yeah. falls down, the shoulders come out, the legs turn off, like everything goes out the window but getting right. this out. Whereas we should be creating that tension the, the feet don't move, the hands don't move, everything stays locked in. We use that tension to unrack slightly. You'll, um, you, you kind of do a really good job of like pulling it out of the rack. Yeah, I'm pushing thinking you're dragging it. Yeah, 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 which is actually pretty good in this rack because you can just kind of just get over the top of it. But we're going to get that tension. You're going to try and pull it out of the rack. I like to think about my shoulder blades when I do it. So less of like a pullover action, more about like, I'm going to pull my shoulder blades down towards my butt. And oh, that's okay. gonna pull it out. It, I mean, yeah. they're, they're the same action, but yeah. like a lot of these things, we're saying the, the same thing in different ways. Mm. But I'm trying to pull it out a little bit. Again, holding tension throughout, holding my chest up nice and high. And then the same thing goes when I'm doing my press. As I'm lowering it down, I'm thinking, keep my chest up high, almost if I can think, kind of meet the bar. I'm gonna really light touch on my chest and then hold it as I press as well. Right. So it's all about just holding your setup. Yeah. It's, it's so much of it comes back to getting this setup and then holding the setup. Too many people are thinking like, you know, press really hard or whatever, but it's like, hold my setup whilst I press. This is kind of like the, the thing that wants to be run through your head. All right. So the, the bracing part is our next part of the equation. So we've got the tight setup, which is usually the hardest part, the most thoughtful part, the actually wedging in there. Uh, We've got the unrack, which hopefully we've kept our tightness in. We've, we shouldn't have to like breathe a lot or brace too much. The tension is kind of our brace up until that point. And then after that, uh, when we're about to start, if we can use it to like, kind of like lock down our structure a little bit more. Just like in a squat, when I'm here, I'm bracing really hard so that when I go through the lift, I'm not just like moving around side to side, mm. like I'm creating rigidity. In a bench press, it's kind of the same concept, like we're just creating more rigidity, but in a way different position. All right. So we're being in this big flared position that's created through leg drive and our upper body uh, tightness and creating this big arch. And then obviously our abs are, are long, so like it's, it's less of a cylinder action that we've, we've talked about mm. in other videos and more like I'm just going to use my breath to just lock this all down a little bit more. So it's right. just kind of like... When we're teaching bracing or any other lift, we're teaching don't flare. In this, we're thinking flare maximally. So right. what I like to think about is imagine that like my lungs, which they are, under my ribs, yeah. and I'm filling up this balloon. I'm breathing like into this balloon that's underneath my ribs. Like I'm really right. using it to like almost try and get a little bit more height, try and get a little right. bit more expansion this way. Gotcha. Rather than in a squat, you know, you breathe 360 yeah. breathing yeah. or whatever, it's trying to, it's right. a, it's an all-round, like spinal rigidity thing. In this case, we don't need 
We don't need rigidity because we've got the bench to do that. All right, no, this, don't need the spine. This bench ain't moving. Yeah. So it's here. Well, our breath is literally to get higher, is to create all right. more, yeah. And then when you... You see all these things are coming to the same stuff, which is yeah. trying to cheat more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what powerlifting is. Don't yeah. move and try and cheat as much as you can. So then do you exhale when you press it up? We're not, we're not exhaling at all. So it's here, I've unwrapped, I've held my height, I'm gonna breathe, get as high as I can, hold it, and just hold it, and then I'm gonna exhale at the top if I need to, to take right. my next breath. Because yeah, if, if you did say two reps, you would <sighs> exhale, inhale again. Yeah, I probably wouldn't go again. like that much of an exhale, it'd be more right. like a, like a just a little, I let out a little bit of air, and right. like re-brace. It's just yeah. like in a squat, when you get to the top of the squat, you don't go. <sighs> yeah, it's got a small fart. Yeah, it's just a little. <sighs> you see me weightlifting all the time, though. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. It's okay. like the little, like. Yeah. It's like a uh, <laughs> gauging the pressure, like, yeah. like change, like just repressurizing. Yeah. It's okay. like that. They, um, yeah, we definitely don't want to let it all out because if you if you exhale, mm. all this is going to fall, like all of it. Yeah. You know. Whereas I want to keep high and just brace into this. Gotcha. Rigid structure. Okay. I'll try this one as well. All right. My grip's a lot wider. Yeah. <laughs> Just years of practicing out wide. <laughs> don't, don't include that. <laughs> I'm just creating tension. We get it, your, your bars, are too, uh, bars are too light for you here. <laughs> I get it. Oh, man. <laughs> Your eyeballs are about to Oh man. So why don't um, elbows matter? Because everyone says tuck your elbows. Tuck your elbows like, is kind of an old cue that's the, that came from the, the old powerlifting days of everybody wearing suits and stuff where you kind of right. needed to. Like you're trying to take advantage of the suit. Whereas for right. us, it's, there's no, like we're trying to keep our elbows under the bar. We're trying to keep balanced. But like what if I, I don't know, what if I end up flaring out. You know, something, something to do like the chicken wing press. Yeah, but usually that happens because they're trying to over tuck. They always are getting in front of the bar and then as they press, they come back out. What do you mean in front? Is that like from a top down view? Yeah, the... but if I try to purposely over tuck a little bit and come in like this. Oh, so I... your elbows are there, the bar's here. Yeah, I'm doing like a mini skull crusher. Right. And then if this was any significant, I can kind of do that now. Yeah. But if this was like a big heavy weight for me, I can guarantee you, as I press out the bottom, I'm gonna go. So where should you be? Instead, like doing that exact same position again, where should you be? Just like letting them be where they wanna be under like the bar. That should so, all be in one line the entire time. And if you want your elbows down more, the bar's gotta come down more. Yes. Ah, yeah. okay. Just like in, in squats, things are gonna be stacked to yeah, create okay. force. Okay. Whereas if it's coming here, I'm just doing a, a skull yeah, crusher, which sure. usually is as strong as your bench. For sure. But, yeah, just getting stuck, getting stable. Okay. That's all we've got in the bench press because it's the only lift with a bench, so we just have to try and make it so that our pecs can do their job. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, love it. You do a lot of good things. All right. <sighs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, wrists are in a nice natural position. You're not trying to like do what a lot of people do and just kind of like have them super vertical. Like that. They yeah, actually, so where, where is good and bad? That's bad, if I was like that. Well, or if I'm under it. First of all, you want to get it deep in your hand and it's going to kind of run, obviously, over your thumb. It yeah. needs to be. <laughs> you can't, and then it's going to run kind of on a slight angle down towards this big meaty part of your hand. So you're going to be slightly internally rotated. Like that. So some people, they might end up doing it like too much like that, I guess. I mean, it's, it's, that's not like a bad that. thing, but I meant more like the, the wrist being just straight up and down. Right. So some, I don't even know if I can lift that, but they yeah, try it's to just do not that. Yeah, it's not a stable position, but people think, yeah. hey, vertical is, is what I want, whereas you want it it's to be like in a very... <laughs> think about, right through my thumbs, not my face. <laughs> yeah, think about if you're doing a push-up, though. Like, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? But that's obviously not good either, is it? No, because it's too high in your fingers now. Right. So, so it needs like, to be buried in this thumb on this meaty part of your hand. And then it actually helps when we do that setup, how you're pressing against it. Oh you know yeah. how we're pressing yeah, against yeah, it? Like if it feels like it's gonna slide out of your hand or it's gonna, I don't know, like you can't create a lot of force into it yeah. or whatever, then 
you're probably doing it wrong. So yeah, if you just kind of do that, you should yeah. find a nice natural position for where it's going to sit and be balanced. Yeah, gotcha. They haven't mentioned much about like um, shoulder blade position. Should I be thinking about that at all? The, the reason why I haven't mentioned it is because we haven't really needed to, and that's because when you jam yourself into extension, mm. when, you're, when you're using that leg drive and, and wedging yourself into this big arch, like if I go on an arch now, my shoulder blades are automatically kind of put into that depressed and somewhat retracted position. Yeah. Like if you go into this and then try and reach forward, like you can't protract, like you just, Right. There's not much there, it's so limited. Yeah, by, until I, if I was to yeah, lose my arch. Yeah, yeah you need to change the, your shape overall. So like right. this arch, this tightness, this tension that we're creating, that we're getting into, does that a lot for us. What if somebody didn't do the arch? If they didn't do, if, what if they or, just laid down? Yeah, if they just laid down. Or, or what if you're doing something like a Larson press? Larson up? press, I still teach it as, I want to create like some tension. I'm still going through this, which is, see, as I do this little slide thing as well, it's creating some depression in my shoulder blades. Mm. And as I pull my chest up to the roof, it's creating a little bit of retraction. Yeah. So it's not like I have to think about these things too much. It's the position overall that makes those positions for me. And even with last Press, I would kind of create it and then let my feet out and then work on holding my upper body. What if your feet are off the ground? Yeah. Right, and still stays. Getting a little bit more. It looks more comfortable in holding it now. Right, yeah, it does. It feels, doesn't feel as, as unorthodox, even getting into position. Sort of. It's one of those yeah. lists where even when I've been doing it nearly every week for the last, you know, nearly 10 years, yeah. that um, it just never gets comfortable. Like it's not meant to be comfortable. Right. You just get better at embracing this yeah. discomfort. Yeah. So that tightness is the, the annoying thing is like you get really tight and then you'll almost somewhat get used to that and then you'll figure out more ways to like enhance your leg drive. Like maybe you change your foot position or maybe you you wedge in a slightly different, like a slightly better way. And you yeah. just learn to create better tension, which makes you a better bench press, but makes it perpetually more uncomfortable. Right. <laughs>